Hey everyone, happy Sunday. Welcome along to Ski Sunday number 14. Um, I hope you're well, hope you're uh, enjoying the day wherever you are. I'm speaking from London in the UK and uh, still a bit chilly here. It's not really proper spring yet, but they, uh, the blossoms have been out and um, yeah, it's been, it's, the sun's out at least, so that's nice. Um, but yeah. Welcome along. So today I'm going to be looking at uh, this track here, uh, West End Girls um, by the Pet Shop Boys. And this is my original seven inch single. There we go. And uh, I absolutely love this track when it came out. Um, so much so that I bought the single. Um, and yeah, it came out in 1985. So uh, I must have been around 14 years old at that time. Um, so you can work out my age. And um, produced by Stephen Haig and engineered by David Jacob. Um, and I bought the album as well. Please, some absolutely brilliant tracks on there. I think my favorite is uh, Love Comes Quickly actually. Um, but I'm sure everyone's got their favourites. But um, hey, how you doing? Hey, Moda. Happy Sunday. Um, but yeah, this is uh, West End Guys is on this, obviously. Um, brilliant. And yeah, they're a great band. And what was amazing, little quick story, uh, is that uh, I actually was lucky enough to do some work experience um, when I was 16. Uh, in the UK we had O levels then and so it was in between my O levels and my A levels and there happened to be one uh, a parent at school who worked for an advertising agency and there were a number of us that were in a band at the time who were all kind of really into music and uh, this father managed to get get us um, some work experience in various studios in London and uh, hey yes music on hey day. <laughs> Um, and the studio that I got to go to was one called Advision, um, which was in the West End of London. I knew nothing about it at the time, um, but went in there and I was in, I was there for two weeks. And who should be recording in there but the Pet Shop Boys with Stephen Haig and Laker Jacob. And they at that time they were recording It's a Sin. So that must have been a couple of years after uh, West End Girls. Um, communards were there as well, so got to meet Richard Coles, Jimmy Somerville, um, Errol Brown was there, it was just unbelievable and uh, I was just the kid just running around kind of buying flowers for the, for the reception and making tea and that kind of thing um, and they offered me a job actually I think uh, in, in the studio but uh, very wisely uh, I was informed that I should go back to school and do my A-levels, which I did. Um, but I ended up doing music, which was great. <laughs> but uh, So that's my little story. Um, I suppose that's my little kind of connection, really, with, with this track and um, the Pet Shop Boys. So I haven't, I mean, I, just, I decided to do this a couple of days ago. I hadn't really planned for it at all. I haven't done that much um, research. I've done a little bit and a big shout out to my colleague, um, Ali Jameson. Uh, he sent me a great link, um, which I'll have a look at in a minute. Um, and that just gives a little bit of insight into the equipment that was used um, and especially like the bass sound, the sort of squelchy bass sound. So that's very, very, uh, you know, useful. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. And I think it's just a case of just building up. Um, you probably have to bear with me while I kind of work out things like uh, chords and things like that. Um, so but I think, yeah, let's let's 
do it together. If you have any any questions, put them in the chat. Um, any recommendations? Thing I could, things I could be doing better. I learn from this process as much as as much as anyone else. Really, you know, it's uh, it's always great to have everyone uh, uh, you know here with me uh, doing it. So. So let's make a start. Um, as you may have seen in some of my previous uh, streams, um, I've started using this software, Neuralmix Pro, and big shout out to the to the people there who've um, actually uh, given me this software, which is great. So um, yeah, so what this allows me to do is actually to split up um, the original track into three different elements: the vocals, the harmonic, the kind of which is I suppose the music, and then the drums. Um, and it's very useful for this process because it means that I can isolate um, the different parts and if I need to, I can kind of listen to things in a bit more detail. It's not it's not always brilliant quality and I know there are other ways of doing it. Um, but anyway, I've put it in here. So let's just have a little quick uh, listen through. And so I'm gonna, not gonna play it all. One of the things that happens with this actually is because I normally archive these streams on YouTube and the algorithm is just crazy on YouTube now and it just it instantly kind of flags copyrighted material so um, I'm going to try to minimize playing the original as much as possible but I probably will have to do it and it will get you know uh, muted at that point anyway but anyway let's just take it forward a little bit Ahead, you think you're mad. okay so there's the vocal kicking in chairs and knocking down tables in a restaurant in a West End town call the police there's the harmonic section. And there's the beats. So that's really good. What's really cool is it, it analyzes the key signature, um, which is giving as E minor, and also the BPM, which is giving us 113.2. Um, so that's that's just a good reference, a good thing to sort of note down, especially when it comes to warping. Um, so all I need to do uh, is just click on export. Um, I've actually already done this to save a bit of time um, and you just select what you want to be exported. So we've got acapella, harmonic and the drums um, and then that gives you three files. Uh, so let me just hide that now and you can see these files are here. Um, uh, I've just put them into like a blank uh, Ableton Live project. Um, hey Woxer. Ah, well there you go. Any idea where that awesome bass sound come, came from? We are, are going to talk about that right now because I've got a little, little bit of uh, inside information. Um, and again, many thanks to uh, Ali Jameson for that. Um, so, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag these files here uh, onto Ableton Live. Let's just put them there. There we go. And let's just just a bit of housekeeping. Let's just uh, delete these empty tracks up here. Looks like it's just doing a bit of analysis. There we go. Um, all right, and I'm going to drag the main track there to the top. Um, and then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the warping for all of these because it's done some. It's done its own warping. I know there's a setting to stop that, but. Um, I can never consistently get it to work for some reason. Um, then I'm going to just drag out uh, all these start points there, which have been, I suppose, been kind of truncated due to the fact that it was auto warped. Um, and then I'm just going to drag those to the start of the bar. And with any luck, these should be uh, exactly Oops. This should be exactly the same length to literally to the nearest sample. Um, although that one isn't, maybe I need to drag that out. Okay. It's interesting. Why that? Ah, there we go. I didn't drag that properly. There we go. So if I just go back to the end now. There we go. So they look like they're exactly the same. Um, now, what that means um, I can do is I can do uh, multi-clip warping, um, and that's really handy because it means what what I want to do for the analysis of this is I want to get it completely synced up to the beat, um, and then uh, and I can sort of 
then you know at the same time sync up the a cappella, the drums and the harmonic section um, which is kind of you know really really useful so uh, in order to do that um, now we've got these unwarped um, I'm actually going to use the new Ableton 11 live 11 uh, link tracks feature there we go um, and that means that anything I do to kind of one of the clips it will do to do exactly the same thing so for example if I just want to um, just you know split that clip there it will just do it to all of them it's going to undo that um, but likewise um, it will also allow me to warp them all together so I've just just done it on one and it's done it to all of them at the same at the same time which is really really useful um, so let's just do the warping now just to kind of get it get it in time um, I'm just gonna just play here and just mute those so I'm just gonna be listening to the uh, original there we go so what I'm gonna do I think just to start with is just to just to cut that there and then just have that um, drag that to the start of maybe bar 17 there we go just make sure it is no it's not there we go so I've put the metronome on For some reason it's got 82.33 uh, I'm not sure why it's giving me giving me that uh, tempo Right, so let's just go back here now and turn the metronome off um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to <coughs> put a warp marker there Sometimes. and let's just I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to drag this all the way up there in fact, before I do that, let's just let's just lose the first warp marker. There we go. So let's just drag this to 17 now. There we go. Let's just do this. There we go. And let's just do the same thing. Hopefully this is going to work. There we go. Yep, that's done that. Great. Um, I know there's probably a more efficient ways of doing this, but let's just drag it there. There we go. Okay, so let's just um, now just get this in time. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. There we go. So let's drag that out there. Right, and I think what did we say it was 113.2 sometimes so let's put the metronome on sometimes you're better off dead. Let's take it a little bit further down the track oh that's going a little bit out isn't it so let's just see if we can it may well be that it's just uh, going out of time anyway. But let's see. The Eastern boys and Western. Oh, that's pretty good. Ooh, nice. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Because I've got linked track editing on, um, hopefully. Um, it has kept, um, it's applied the warping um, to uh, all the other tracks. So we can check that in a minute and that's going to be quite useful. So let's have a listen now to... Western town, the the Eastern boys and Western. There we go, you've got the acapella. Drums. Take it a little bit further down. I mean, it's pretty crusty, isn't that? It's not. It's not the best. Uh, it didn't work so well for that. But it's, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But, but it's going to be good enough for us to just sort of drop an acapella over the top um, at the end, which is going to be really handy. 
So let's just uh, drag these out now um, and then let's just uh, see at the start of the track if that's in time. Musings. Great, you're here for Sunday afternoon afternoon 80s synth nerdery. Well, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up that thread in a minute actually. Um, so uh, oh great, well I'm I'm if you've done if you've done your own breakdowns then I'm I'm starting to feel a bit nervous because I haven't done a lot of <laughs> I haven't done a lot of research on this. I'm just kind of um, you know going in um, you know live. So uh, yeah, if you've got if you've got any any um, tips, then let me know. Um, okay, so anyway, the first the first part of this um, process is I just what, what I want to do is put this into session view and also just do a bit of analysis on the different sections of the track, um, and then we're going to put that into session view in Ableton Live, um, and then we can actually kind of have things in in loops basically, um, and because uh, you know obviously there's going to be repeating parts and repeating sections. Uh, so yeah, let's let's just go in from the start. Um, take off the metronome. Maybe you should go from here. Okay. I'm gonna do just do some cuts basically of the different sections. Okay, so we've got this one here. The intro. Sometimes you're better off dead. There's a gun in your hand. It's okay. pointing at your head. First you one. You're mad. Too unstable. section here. Famous cowbell comes in there. We always want more cowbell. Too many shadows. Great, then we've got the second verse and I'm assuming that's oh, how often would you choose a hard or soft option? Yep, so that's the same length there for verse two. Then we've got the chorus. Okay, so that's interesting. We kind of lose a bar there. So that is what, three three bars? Yeah, three bar section. Interesting. And then we've got this section here, which is the choir and trumpet section. And here the traffic comes back in there as well. Come in with the third verse. Right, nice. Well, um, the next thing I do is normally with these is I just do a bit of colouring because that could be quite useful. Um, so now I've actually got these uh, split up, um, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a save just in case. Okay, there we go. 
Right, so first of all, let's kick Sometime. off with the verses. Um, so we'll give the verses a nice blue color. And because I've got link track editing on, um, it's applied that to all the, all the clips, which is really good. And what's more is I can do a command R and just do verse, and I'll call that a verse one. There we go. Okay, and we're gonna call, we'll, yeah, we'll call that the chorus, make that a nice bright green color. And again, and what are we going to call this section? There's only one option, isn't there? Cowbell. Maybe not in capitals. And uh, what's a good cowbell colour? Maybe we'll give it a kind of brown. There we go. Great, so then we've got verse 2, and we're going to make that blue again. Did I choose the right blue? Uh, I think I did. Let me check. Yes, it's the right blue. Okay, verse two, there we go. And then we've got the chorus again, you kind of get the picture. Um, but I love um, visualizing arrangements like this. It certainly makes it uh, makes the process easier for uh, analysis. Uh, oops. Here we go. Why isn't that giving me the uh, option to name it? There we go. Um, okay, then we got. Um, we'll call that. Uh, we'll just call it trumpet. Trumpet section. That's a good trumpet. Trumpet color. Maybe pink. There we go. Uh, then we got chorus again. Thank you for bearing with me while I do this. Um, and we've got the cowbell, although listening to that now, there's the cowbell, but there's also a kind of vocal sample in there. I don't know if that's coming from the emulator or whatever they were using, um, but we'll keep, give that the name, give that the color and the name. And then we've got the uh, second verse. Sorry, third verse, what am I saying? I can't count. Verse three. And chorus again. There we go, and then we got cowbell, which this time is uh, four bars. And then we got the outro, which uh, let's just give that uh, a different color, maybe you give that an orange color for outro. Cool, um, so let's just go back to the intro bits now. So, so that's basically the, the cowbell section, but without the cowbell. So I think I'll just for the sake of consistency, musically, I'll give that the brown, um, but I'm going to call that uh, intro. Um... <laughs> you know what? I don't think I've got the Archeria Emu, but I've got another Emu up my sleeve. That sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? Uh, anyway. Okay, um, let's just give this, uh, let's call this intro. <laughs> You're gonna take it. Cool, uh, I'm giving a vast array of colors here. There we go. We made it, there we go. There is the arrangement of West End Girls. Um, so yeah, doesn't that look nice? Doesn't it look very pretty? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to use uh, this function, consolidate time to new scene. Um, and what that's gonna do uh, is it's going to transfer that over into session view for me. Um, but what's really useful about it is that it crops the clips, um, so I don't have to do that, and it loops them as well. Um, and then that just means that I can use my Ableton push just to trigger those scenes um, and then start actually kind of focusing in on the different sections and the different chord sequences. Um, so that's really gonna, that's going to really help. So in order to do that, um, all I need to do uh, is just to highlight the different clips. And again, we've got link track editing on, which is really useful. And then I've set up a key command. 
for this, which is consolidate time, which is to new scene, which is shift, command and N. So if I just do that for the first one and then shoot over, you can see that it's just put that straight in there in session view for me. And if I just click on a, a clip, you can see that it's looped it um, and it's cropped it. Has it cropped it? Yes, it has cropped it. Phew. All right. Um, so let's just go back here um, and let's just, just go through and do all of these sections and it should put them uh, sequentially for me. Uh, there we go. Yeah, it's doing that. So let's just keep on going. There we go. You can always go and make a cup of tea if you uh, get bored of me doing this. But it'd be nice if there was a uh, if there was a command that basically did it all for you in one go, I mean, maybe I'm asking too much. There we go, nearly there. <clears throat> all right, so look at that. Great, so we've got the different sections now and um, I'm not going to, yeah, I mean, what, be, might, what might be quite useful is just to actually kind of name them in the master track uh, here, just just so we kind of, uh, we, we, know where, we know where we are. So for example, we can do intro, um, this is kind of intro as well. I won't do all of them for the moment because we'll be here uh, all day, but um, just, to start with, we can just do like verse one, uh, chorus, and uh, cowbell. There we go. I can't spell cowbell. Great. So um, what I can do now is just go to session view here, and I can now sort of rearrange it on the fly. Oh, the beauty of Ableton Live. Um, and then also what I can do, say if I want to play the verse. Sometimes you're better off dead, there's a gun in your hand. Let's I've then got the a cappella. Got the beat. Restaurant in a West End town. Okay, so um, let's just make these, sort of minimize these because we're not going to be uh, using them um, for the moment. Um, and yeah, the main one that we probably want to refer to is just the main kind of mix there. Uh, and yeah, let's uh, just, just have a quick pause and I'm going to just shoot over here and not show you my Twitch page or that, um, but just mention the fact that there was an original version of this um, it was produced by Bobby Orlando um, and then so Stephen Haig then re basically reproduced it. Um, let's just have a little quick listen to what that sounds like. So it's kind of faster. But you can hear there's a lot of common things there. So there's that bass line. Um, the, it's definitely faster, but it's got those sort of strings in as well. Um, sounds like an HLA. Got, have you got it? Do you get it? If so, how often? Which do you choose a hard or soft option? <laughs> well worth checking out. Um, but anyway, so let's just have a quick look. So this is the thread here from Musings, um, and I know that you're watching now, but so this was super helpful. Um, <clears throat> yeah, like I said, my colleague uh, Ali Jameson told me about this. Um, and yes, yeah, so the main question was, who knows the synthy hardware responsible for the bass sound? Um, now, I'd read another article, which uh, maybe, where was it? I think it was, yeah, it was in Vintage Synth Explorer, um, where 
Stephen Haig said, well, ve people people basically all put in their kind of uh, two pence into it. and But there was some article, I think, where Stephen Haig was saying that um, it was an OBX, an Oberheim. Um, and then there's someone else saying that it's it's a mini Moog. Uh, so I was like, okay, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with this. And then I saw this other post, and I was like, ah, right, okay, it's not that. It doesn't sound like it is because I think it was an interview with David Jacob, and what he brought up was uh, the actual uh, sort of channel strip names. Um, so what we can see here is for the bass. We've got um, a DX combination of a DX7, um, an emulator bass, which I think is just a kick drum or a bass drum, and then a Jupiter. And according to this, according to the thread or the article, it was a Jupiter Six. Um, so yeah, that's the main, uh, you know, baseline sound. So it might be worth you know having a little go at trying to put those three together, maybe. And then strings, we've got uh, emulator. So um, that shouldn't be too much problem. We can we can try and find something for that. Um, drums. Uh, it sounds to me like it's the uh, DMX drums um, again. Oberheim and um, in Ableton Live, there's a DMX core kit. So I think I'll probably go for that. I think there may be some other sounds in there, like the hi hats. I'm not sure if they're coming from from uh, the DMX. Um, so maybe maybe try something different. Then there's congas. I think that might be coming from the emulator. Maybe the the cowbell as well. So uh, yeah, I think you know. And then there's choir and trumpet, which could be from the Fairlight, could be from the emulator. I'm not too sure. But I think we should kick off um, just with the drums, um, and then go from there. And just quickly before we go, uh, from, not from before we go, <laughs> before we set off on this. Um, someone asked about if I'm going to be using the Archeria. I'm actually not. I'm going to be using this UVI um, some plugins, uh, and there's one here called Emulation Two. Um, I think I've used this in the past for other deconstructions that I've done, um, but I think that's pretty much going to provide the main sounds that we want. Um, I'll just put the link in the chat actually, just in case you want to check out Emulator Trumpet. There we go. So. Let's hope there's an emulator trumpet in that in that uh, selection. Uh, cool. All right. So um, let's just start off with. Uh, all right. So let's just put that pattern together. Um, I'm going to go to the drums here. There we go. And let's go for the DMX core kit. So definitely sounds like the that's the snare and the clap, probably the kick as well. This section is literally just let's just turn down the original track um, and you can see it sounds quite thin at the moment but um, let's I'm sure we can beef that up okay so let's put the uh, record quantize on um, and then it's just that so I just want to have another quick ref ref refer back to this now. Right, so the the hi hat I mean it sounds it sounds very kind of very sort of sampled. Um I could I could try kind of uh maybe just taking off some of the bottom end of that. Um
I'm kind of really, yeah, really kind of thinning it out. Um, and maybe, maybe kind of tuning it up a little bit as well. So yeah, let's try that. Sorry, you're probably hearing my me hitting the push. That's really loud. That actually doesn't sound doesn't sound too bad. Let's put it in. Okay, that's just not too bad at all, actually. Um, let's just sort the velocities out. That one's a little bit loud, isn't it? Okay, um, that's uh, so it's got some sort of overall macro control on this. Uh, let's just try maybe putting the glue in. I think it needs a bit more kind of compression and it also needs uh, some reverb. Let's just listen to. Okay, so let's look at some reverb for this. Um, I think we can we can put something on the kind of internal send and return. Um, so what should we go for? Uh, maybe we should go for the RMX AMS. This um, take that off. Okay, um, so it's on wet solo, which is good. Um, let's just maybe. Just take the decay time, decay time down. Maybe try adding a bit of that to the hats as well. Hey. Hi, Papo. Papa Juice. <laughs> um, nice to have you along. Thank you. Glad you're liking it. Glad you're enjoying it. Um, right, we need something on the kick, don't we? Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Um, I'm sure they have one of those in the studio. All right, that always, already looks like it's peaking a bit, so I'm going to just bring these, bring that down a bit. Um, so yeah, let's do do some um, processing on this. Um, I might just kind of stick with some Ableton EQ. Let's just balance this a little bit. Let's just bring these down. And let's just go for, uh, for the sake of speed, I think let's just go for the uh, drum bus uh, on all of that. Love the drum bus, as I'm sure you might know from previous streams. Um, so that instantly kind of gives it a bit of punch. It's got some drive on there. Um, and then just increasing the transient control there. All ah, right, okay, thanks Musines. Good to know. Um, 
Yeah, I was gonna. I was. Yeah, I did read that actually. Um, I think yeah, David, David Jacob um, mentioned that. Um, so yeah, I was thinking of um, using uh, the Sound Toys Micro Shift as a sort of alternative to the harmonizer. But we'll get to that in a minute. Um, okay, so maybe a bit of boom as well. Just to, that might be a bit too much. Okay. Ah, I can. I think I just might need to do a little bit of work uh, on. I think there's some maybe pre delay. Um, there we go. So let's just maybe increase. There we go. Annoying, isn't it? Also, I think that snare is um, tuned up a bit. So now thinking that maybe, no, I don't know. I was thinking maybe the clap might be playing along with it. It's quite nice with it. Let's leave it. Let's leave it for the moment because I think I think the. Um, I've got a feeling that the clap might have other uses and be more prominent later on. So um, I think we'll leave that there for the moment. Let's just listen now to um, what variation there is. Uh, so let's listen now to the verse. Uh, Sometimes you're better off dead. There's a gun in okay. your hand that's pointing at your head. So I was right. So we've got the kind of on the on the two beat, you've got the clap, and then on the four beat, you've got uh, the tambourine. Sometimes you're better off dead. There's a gun in your hand that's pointing at your head You think you're mad, too unstable Kicking in chairs and knocking down tables in a restaurant So let's put that in and see if we can make it sound nice um, So I'm just going to duplicate that down All right, that's too loud isn't it? Let's bring that down. There we go. I think actually I might put a separate reverb on that tambourine. Um, and let's go for uh, maybe the EMT 140. It needs quite a big reverb, I think. And then what can we put on this? Maybe, yeah. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very naughty and uh, just put a separate one on each one. I know I could do it, send and return. Okay. Okay. I'm a massive fan of that tambourine. I wonder if we can maybe... Maybe we can lower the pitch of it or something. Um, Bring the level down and then let's just program that in. Okay. Gun in your hand that's pointing 
around your head You think you're stable Kicking in chairs and knocking down Okay, uh, let's do a quick save Have a little drink of water Actually throw my water on the floor <laughs> Um, Sean Pye, what drum plugin am I, am I using? Uh, so this is, it's just um, a drum rack. So uh, it's just an Ableton native device, uh, the drum rack. Um, it's brilliant because um, it means that it kind of maps, maps it to the push to. Um, and and one thing I, I, I love, and it's funny because I actually did it, I was working in Logic yesterday. I mean, I, I started off on Logic, well, actually before that I was on Cubase, but used Logic for many, many years and um, then kind of gradually shifted over to Ableton because mainly because initially I was like preparing projects to play out live. And I went back to, I, what I needed to do was basically split up an Apple, Apple loop. So I cut it up and then put it into an EXS, which is now called Sampler in, in Logic 10.5. And I want to split it up. I wanted to EQ, you know, filter, filter individual sounds. And the process just took me so long, maybe because I just was unfamiliar with that. I haven't been, hadn't used it for a long time. Whereas the drum rack, the fact that it automatically just puts everything out, everything on a channel for you, you can just drag an effect on, drag an effect onto each channel really easily. You know, whereas with Logic, you have to kind of assign the outputs for groups and it's just like, oh, um, so, yeah, I do. I mean, I still I think that Logic is great, you know, and the, so many brilliant things about it. But certainly the drum rack is is a, a real breeze to use. Um, and this is uh, this actual uh, kind of drum kit is just a factory kit just comes with. So um, but I've just, you know, done a bit of processing on it. Uh, oh good <laughs> so hardware synths in my studio um, I've got a very very small studio here um, and I haven't got everything with me unfortunately um, but I've got uh, up here I've got a Korg mini log um, which I really love I've got an SH101 Roland SH101 which is what uh, it's probably one of my yeah it was my first analog synth um, I've got a Roland TR66 drum machine that I picked up in a shop called Hard Off in Japan, uh, brought all the way back. Um, and then here I've got a Super JV synth, and if you can see that, probably up there. I've got a Nord Modular, I've got a Space Echo up there as well. Um, and yeah, I think that's, oh yeah, and in, I've got I've got a, a Korg Arp Odyssey, which is in a suitcase at the moment. I've only got enough room for it. I can either have like a, a turntable or my Arp Odyssey set up here. But then um, actually a bit in storage, I've got a Yamaha DX7, I've got a Korg O1W, I've got a Fender Rhodes, I've got a Wurlitzer. Uh, I think that's about, that's about it. Um, and I wish I could have them all set up. So, uh, but unfortunately, I haven't got the space at the moment. But hopefully, that will change at some point. Um, okay, yeah. So you use it, use it at uni. Well, I mean, Logic is brilliant, and I think you know, there's there's so much sort of transferable skills between the two. Um, it's just that I think for me, I mean, I used Ableton for a long time without any hardware, and then Push came along, Push One, and then Push Two. And it's just now having that having that hardware next to me while I'm working, um, it feels like my sort of right arm. You know, it, it's, it'd be really weird to not have it there. Um, but that's not saying you have to have it. Uh, but there's just yeah, I think there's I respect the way that Ableton have kept things quite minimal and simple, um, and it kind of in some way allows you to just really focus on getting the sound and using your ears and you know. But on the other hand, Logic's great as well, so I don't like. I won't get into, into an internal debate about it. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Museum's fantastic. Been using Logic. Yeah. Well, I mean, I started out on uh, a BBC B computer many years ago with uh, software on that. Then I progressed onto an Atari ST where I was using Cubase. And um, yeah. It's a great. I agree. So there. Yeah, then I then I um, progressed onto Cubase, made some albums, 
with that, made loads of loads of stuff on that. And then uh, when I got a faster Mac, I then got a very early version of Logic. Um, and then, yeah, went from Logic to Ableton and then with a bit of Pro Tools here and there as well. But Pro 24, wow. <laughs> we used that, I think, for our, the first album that I did, which was this band called The K Creative. We were using Pro 24 uh, for that. So, yeah. <sighs> Those were the days. Um, all right, so let's just get back to this. All right, so that's that. Let's um, just listen now to the chorus uh, and see what happens with that. Western town, the dead end world, the eastern boys and western girls. In western town, the dead end world, the eastern boys and western girls. West end. Western town, the okay, so there's. So what we want to do is we want to copy that down um, and how many bars is that? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Western town, the dead end world, the eastern boys and western girls. In a western town, the dead end world, the eastern boys and western girls. All right, so, so what, basically what we've got at the moment is that we've got a two bar loop. Um, so I can on here, I can just do double loop twice. There we go. And then just select the last two bars and, and then what I'm going to do is just uh, quickly drag that to there. Let's just do that here, actually, just so that we get uh, just that last one. So that's pretty simple. We just want to take out, we just want to add maybe another kick. So where that snare is, we'll just put a kick. Uh, so. Very simple. Okay, cool. So let's just put that back to there. That's interesting, actually. When I just select two, oh no, okay. So I can just select one bar. Okay, good. All right, so let's go back here. Um, and then let's just listen through to the cowbell section. Ah, there we go. So that's a four bar section. So let's just drag that down there. So let's do the same thing. Let's just double that loop. Um, and then what happens? Okay, so we just want to concentrate on that last bar. There we go. One bar. And let's just go bar, bar here. Okay, I don't normally draw things in, but I'm gonna do that. I'm going to do a little bit of tweaking on this snare. EQing, I think. Correct terminology. Okay, let's put that back to the four bars it deserves. 
Um, and also go back here. Cool. Um, now let's, I think that's enough to be getting on with for the moment. Let's just go to the intro. Um. All right, so we can borrow something that we've got here. Um, we can just. Let's just take out uh, snare. Very simple. And then what happens for this section? Okay, what I might do for this uh, is just duplicate that and uh, make that eight bars. And I'm just going to make this one a bar of one, a bar of one, a one bar, a bar of one. There we go. So let's put that there. And then let's put that there. Because that will just mean that we can just use the same pattern because that's just and then for this one two three four one two three four one and then we can just uh, adapt this just get rid of the kick And we can turn that into a one bar loop as well. So if I now get rid of that, go back to session view. These are all the intro patterns. Uh, hey Sean, um, great. Yeah, I'm glad you. I'm glad that uh, you're finding these useful. Um, this is just a bit of a hobby, really. Um, it's a little kind of weekend project. Uh, the difference between these ones and the ones that you may have seen is that uh, I do a lot of it takes quite a lot of preparation to put them together and research and kind of perfecting it. Whereas this is the opposite. It's really just not doing any preparation at all and just showing the process really of, of kind of how I agonize over, over kind of putting them together. And, but I, I do love it. And I love the fact that, you know, I, I can kind of get input from people um, as I go. So I'm really glad that you're finding them useful. Um, okay. So I think the next thing to look at uh, are the strings. Uh, so this is where we're going to bring in the emulator. So I'm going to go to my plugins and we're going to go to the UVI, which I showed you earlier. In fact, let me just show it to you again. A uh, big shout out to those guys. They've been really, really kind to me over the years. Um, and yeah, this is this is great. I can't remember which. Which one I used it for. Uh, it could have been New Order, it could have been a Prince one, although that probably would have been a Fairlight. But, well, certainly, yeah, they helped me out with the Fairlight one because they do a really good Fairlight uh, sort of pack. Um, anyway, so that's, uh, let's just, I found it, let's just drag it in. I can take this away now. Um, here we go. So, 
So this is the sort of interface plugin they've got. It's a bit like contact, I suppose. Um, and if we have the emulation two, um, they've actually got a drumulator, so that that could have been something that uh, I could have used. Um, but yeah, let's go through. Let's go to the strings and let's just try some things out. Yep, I do. I was going to try some try something for the intro actually, uh, some some sort of ambience. Um, so yeah, maybe like traffic. That's probably the best thing. So. Suitably out of tune sounding. Um, so that's E2 strings. That sounds like a Mellotron. But I think that's probably. Um, okay, so let's try that and then um, let's go to some MIDI effects. I'm just going to try some velocity on this. So set a. Uh, Set the the output low, so it's more consistent. <laughs> oh, right, okay. You can tell me where that ambulance ambience was recorded. Um, oh, right, cool, nice. All right, so let's uh, let's just. Look at look at what's going on with the music. Um, so I'm going to mute the drums for the moment. Let's turn this up a bit. So let me bring up my keyboard. Um, that's going to help. So sounds to me like these are the notes. I haven't really researched the chords at all, so you may well um, outside Advision. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, so let's record that. I'm pretty sure that that's the, the chords. Um, let's just. It's amazing, actually, listening to that. Listening to the uh, ambience. The, the voice is kind of going, ah, 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 ah. It's actually. Wow. Oh, wow. Just reading the comment. That's amazing. <laughs> this is just fantastic. I'm loving it. OK, let's record this in. Um, yeah, let's record it in. Okay. Uh, let's just quantize it. So out the. I'm going to wash this out a little bit with some more reverb. I know there's probably, in fact, maybe let's see what the reverb options are on this. Oops, didn't want that to happen. There we go. Uh, okay. That's good.
okay um, might be a little bit too much but let's just uh, let's just bring it down a little bit okay so so we're in E minor there are the notes one sharp F sharp there and this here this right here uh, is it's got a kind of sus vibe to it, um, but it's it's a bit like an E minor seven without the third. Um, that would be an E minor seven. Um, if we do an inversion of that, and we take that that up there, but then get rid of the third. We just got that. It's a nice kind of suspense chord. Um, let's go to the next section. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks so much. Um, I am enjoying it. Um, we haven't even got to the bass yet as well, and it's already an, already an hour in. Okay, so that's interesting. So chord-wise, we've got an E minor. So that's, an e, that's a, that's a uh, root position. But I can hear that it, he's, they are he, they are keeping that top E. So, so rather than just going to the E and then the D major, and then to the E major, it's just keeping that, that uh, E at the top held. So. So that's what it sounds like to me. Um, I'm just gonna, how long is that loop? See if it changes at all. Okay, so that goes. Dun, dun, dun. Let's just double check that at the end, just to the timing. That's it. And then we've got that little one bar at the end. Uh, okay, so let's just record that in. Um, over eight bars. Let's mute the original um, and. Here we go, and let's put in my drums. Sorry, just practicing. <laughs> let's, put, let's make sure the record quantize is on. Ah, messed up already. Here we go. And again, I'm just going to uh, figure out the best way of playing this, actually. Um, I think maybe... Let's just try it like that. push there, unnecessary push. Let's just fold that and let's just drag those over. Also, I think we can maybe let's sustain these notes a bit more so they're a bit more consistent. There as well. Might as well get in, might as well do, get into the detail a little bit. Uh, there we go, let's just drag those over. Oh, 
there. There's a bit of a gap there. Um, I'm also at this stage going to put a bit of EQ on this. Uh, I'm imagining that they would have had an SSL. I can't remember when I was in there, but they would have had an SSL. So let's try a bit of SSL on this channel strip. There we go. Um, Brighten up a little bit. Oh yes, don't worry. The that I've got that bar. That bar um, is here. So that if we listen to the music now. And there's an extra note in there as well. Um, so so Pretty sure it's that. Um, let me just bring the keyboard up again so you can see what I'm playing. Um. So at that point, it's going. Um, okay, so we've got it. So let's just record it in there uh, and see if we can make them match. Uh, I shouldn't really have had the original in there. Okay, let's extend that out. Okay, so I think we've captured that one bar. Uh, let's go to this now and so just the E major. Does it play that? I'm going to delve a little bit deeper. No, there's no there's no D sharp. So just nice though, because it's implying it's basically like uh, B7, but without the third. So it's the third that would that would determine if it was a major or a minor. So that would be B minor seven. That's B7, but there's no third. But it's kind of implied, and it's implied in the bass, interestingly. So, so, being played in the bass. <sighs> Great. Always so much to learn. Uh, okay, so let's just just extending that back out again, um, and let's just listen to. It.
So it only goes, it just stays on that E and it only changes uh, for that second bar, I think. So, so let's just play that. So. Right. Great. Uh, let's just extend those out there. All right. Um, we're up to the verse now. Cool. We've only we've, that was all the all chorus. Um, so I mean that was all intro, but hopefully we've learned something uh, we, we may be able to repeat. So let's just see what goes on in the verse. Sometimes you're better off dead. There's a gun in your hand that's pointing at your head. You think you're mad. Uh, so. Sometimes you're better off dead. So just a B minor. Hand that's pointing at your head. You think you're mad. Too unstable. Kicking in chairs and knocking down Very tables simple. in a restaurant. In a West End town, call the police, there's a madman around Running down, underground, to a dive bar in a West End town Sometimes you So that's just the same all the way through So let's put that in Alright, let's go to the chorus. Western town, a dead end world. The east. Western town, a dead end world. The eastern boys and western girls. In a western town, a dead end world. Western town, a dead end world. The east. Has it got that A in? Western town, a dead Western town, a dead end world. The eastern boys and western girls. Definitely goes up to the A minus seven. In a western town, a dead end world. The eastern boys and western girls. West end. Okay. Western town, a dead. So I think it's that. So I think it's a B minus seven kind of inversion. So just like D over B. I'm going to put that in anyway. OK, so let's record that in. <laughs> Samling Sunday. <laughs> Western town, a dead end world. Okay, here we go. It's quite hard doing with it. In fact, I could use I could use the a cappella. There we go. Why haven't I been using the a cappella? Okay, here we go. Western town, a dead end world. The eastern boys and western girls. Probably got low strings in actually. In a western town, a dead end world. The eastern boys and western girls. Western. Okay, let's record it in. So slight deviation there of like putting in those low notes and just referring back actually to uh, where is it? 
um, oh yeah, to this, which is the track sheet, it does say somewhere, remind, um, is it like low, yeah, EME, EMU low strings. So it may well be some low strings in there, but hey, never mind. Um, so going back to the cowbell, so that should be, the cowbell section should be the same uh, as the, that intro. <laughs> Okay, uh, so that should work. Oh, uh, okay. All right, thanks, Musines. Uh, that's good to know. Um, all right, well, I'm gonna. I've only got limited time here. It's already we're already kind of one hour twenty, and I can't believe it. I haven't even got to the baseline yet. But that will kind of work for the moment, I think. Um, <coughs> all right, so um, I'm going to now. Uh, great info. It's fantastic. I'm, I'm so happy that I've got this. I'm going to have this archived as well in the chat. It's just brilliant. Um, all right, it's bass time. Um, Okay, so uh, let me just see, let me just see, I'm just going to save this. Um, now I did very, very quickly uh, put together a sound, um, which I'm going to use the Tal Uno LX because it, even though it's a Juno 60 clone, um, it's very CPU light. Um, and I, I had a bit of an issue last week uh, with some of the Roan Cloud plugins, which are brilliant, by the way. Um, it's just that because they're so accurate, they're so great, um, my computer, even though it's quite fast, has problems dealing with uh, them and streaming and all the other stuff that goes on. So and running Ableton Live, of course. Um, so I'm just just for this purposes, uh, the, this purpose, I'm just going to probably use that. Um, but let's see if we can maybe uh, emulate what David Jacobs said. Um, which is to actually layer up a kick, uh, Jupiter 6 or the Tal Uno LX and a DX7 sound. Um, I'm not sure exactly what type of DX7 sound it was, um, but let's have a go anyway. Um, so I'm going to drag in an instrument rack, which means that I can actually layer some things up. OK, so it's a very low pitch percussive sound. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, so first of all, let's drag in uh, the the key sound that we want here, which is that Jupiter squelch sound. So let's go to uh, Tal. There we go, and let's drag that in. If you've seen any of uh, these streams, you see that I pretty much use this all the time. <laughs> OK, so what we're going to do is I just quickly threw this together. So that's the bass sound. So let's first of all just listen to what it sounds like. Uh, uh, I think it's, it's going to be some really kind of tweaking needed with this. I mean, just so you can see, I've just got um, two oscillators here. I've got the square wave or the pulse wave uh, together with the sawtooth as well. So, so that's, that's the pulse. And then you've got the sawtooth. There's no... Uh, there's no chorus on at the moment, but this is where the um, AMS harmonizer comes in. I think what I read I read from the article, so it might be good to put that maybe on uh, a return and just send send this bass to that. I wouldn't want to put it kind of over as an insert on the channel. Okay, so then I think that's pretty good. 
Uh, okay. Yes. Well, I would love to replay this uh, live. That would be amazing. But I'm unfortunately relying on my <laughs> on my quantize too much. Um, okay, so that's a good starting point. Um, now, what's the kick? Is it is it an emulator kick from the library? Do we think? Uh, is it worth having a listen through to some of the kicks and maybe extracting one of the emulator kicks? Um, that would be interesting. Yeah, I'm just wondering where the is it is it a kick drum from coming from the emulator? Yeah, it's a bass. That's what I thought is a bass drum sample. Um, so let's try. If I go, because I know I know that the there are some kicks. Uh, included in the UVI plugin, so it might be a case of, and what they're they're spanned over the keyboard, all the different ones. So rather than, so I won't I won't be able to like play them kind of pitched up. It's funny actually because that's the same, pretty much the same concept from the Adamski track Killer, which I did a deconstruction of, where he basically had he had that ba had the bass sound from a synth. But then he also had it connected to a Yamaha RX20, I think it was, or one of the one of the drum machines, and it was literally just playing, playing over MIDI, just playing the entire kit. But it just added added to that bass line so much. And I, I spent hours trying to figure out what exactly like what it was and trying to make sure the MIDI mapping was correct. Um, but yeah, so okay, so let's just open this up again. Go to the emulator, and we've got drums. There we go, and then we've got the uh, bass drum, mixed drums. So let's have a listen to these. I'm going to take the bit crusher off. I mean, you could probably choose any of these. That's quite good. Um, let's take stereo off. Uh, let's take the reverb off. Okay, so let's just go here and record that in, and then we can add that. Uh, okay, so let's just record it. There we go. Okay, let's just do a little trick. Let's just freeze that. That's probably not the quickest way of doing it, but hey, I've committed to it now. If I'd done it at the start of the track, it probably would have been uh, a bit quicker. All I want to do is just create the audio file. Um, but I could have just recorded it straight in. Never mind. Okay, so let's just now create a new audio track. And we can just drag that. There we go. And it's created that audio for us. Um, if I just play that now. Okay. Uh, so there's our bass drum sample. So what I'm going to do in that case is now just go back over to my instrument rack. And let's now drag over a simpler. And then we're going to drag that over there. And then I'm going to mute the towel for the moment. There we go. So that's having the desired the desired effect because it's playing it. It's not warping it, because I could put warp on and then it would it would keep the pitch. So there's that. Now, if I just uh, go back here now and so I think what we need to do is just uh, mess around a little bit with the actual pitch. So let's just go to the sample and let's just maybe transpose it up a little bit. Let's just put the decay on. Obviously it's quite loud at the moment. So that's 
Seems to me like that's probably the effect. So let's just uh, lower it down. And it doesn't seem to be interfering too much. Uh, let's just take the velocity down as well. Okay, um, so let's get rid of these channels now because we don't need those anymore. We've got that audio in. Let's try to. So let's now try uh, the DX7. Um, so maybe now's the time to dive into the Archeria um, DX7, which I love. I do have a DX7, unfortunately not here, which would, would, would have been nice to have used. Um, I remember I did a video where I was point blank a long time ago where I actually used uh, about seven or eight instances of the DX7. And I'm amazed that it actually uh, computer actually handled it. Um, OK, so let's just uh, give myself a give us a bit more space here. Let's just uh, mute those two. There we go. All right, so let's see what we've got in the way of percussion. We've got drums here. Uh, it could be like maybe, I don't know. Let's try it. Let's try a few things. Not that. All I'm doing is just uh, changing the algorithm. <laughs> it's Sunday. That could, that's, it's the classic log drum, but it could be a candidate. Um, maybe just underneath, uh, you never know. Um, yeah. I'm not sure. Dive into the envelopes a little bit. Let's just maybe make it. Let's give that a go. Um, Turn down a little bit. Main thing is I've made an effort. Uh, there we go. We've got we've got the towel. We've got a kick drum from the emulator, and we've got a DX7 percussion sound. So um, I think that will work for the moment. Uh, so let's just uh, maybe EQ this whole thing a bit. Uh, let's put some EQ8 on it and some compression as well. Let's just use the Ableton compressor. Oh yes, and the other thing as well is uh, this harmonizer thing. So uh, let's just uh, use, replace that, that. Let's just get the sound toys, uh, micro little micro shift going. Okay. Uh, okay. So that definitely wides it out quite nicely. Um, I'm just going to lower those down a little bit more. Okay. So. That is hopefully a bit of a, a recreation of that. So let's just put the part, the bass parts in now. 
All right, I'm going to uh, just take out my stuff for the moment. So because this is a one bar, um, I'm just going to have to go. Let's bring my, my keyboard back so you can see what I'm doing. OK. Get one bar, so yeah, very, very simple. And then we can go. So. Goes. Does it do that twice? All right, so it's just that. Let's put that in. Okay, um, first thing I'm thinking is it's not quite squelchy enough. So let's just add a bit more of squelch in there. Um. And also, EQ wise, maybe there's a little bit too much bring that squelch out a little bit on the EQ as well. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> I, I could, I've, I've sent myself crazy uh, in kind of accuracy levels before. Um, but yeah, I think this is, you know, like I said, this is, this is just the process really. And it's the whole thing as you're doing it, you're kind of learning stuff as you're going along. So, um, all right, let's, let's look at the uh, main verse part now. I'm going to do this in 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 parts, so like maybe two bars at a time. So. So that's the first two bars. Let's just get the next two bars now. We don't want it there, we want it there. Okay, and let's go to the next bit. Um, and let's go to this here. And I think this is probably just a repeat. Okay, so we can probably just copy that over. So 
So I think I can just uh, copy that over. Let's just uh, extend it. Okay, eight bars. Copy. So I just need to replace that one, that bit there, and let's just put in the and, town, a dead end world. and then go back here. Lovely. Okay, so we've got our eight bar loop there. Um, and let's just put this back as it was. There we go. Let's just hide that for the moment. Um, so let's just take out that. Acapella. The Eastern boys and Western girls. Okay, um, and then we've got this section, which uh, is, I'm just going to listen to it just for accuracy. Now, is that the same as this? I think pretty sure it is the same as that intro section. Nice. Uh, I'm just going to, while I'm here, I'm just going to increase the level of the clap. And the Okay, so um, now it's time for the cowbell. So I'm assuming that this is another emulator cowbell because in if I go back to the DMX kit, I don't think there's a cowbell. No. Okay. So the cowbell, so Emulator quiet and cowbells. Oh, wow. This is amazing. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, okay, so. Um, so is the cow, where did the cowbell come from, though? Is the cowbell from the emulator? I wonder. Should we see uh, if there is a cowbell sound that we can use uh, from the UVI? Uh, E2 cowbell. Please let there be an E2 cowbell. Percussion. Um, ethnic percussions, maybe? It's not particularly ethnic, though, is it? Not that. Um, Co 
Conga, no Indian Metallic Cloud. Very nice. I could just do a search, I suppose. Let's go back to Yeah, maybe if I go back to this, let's see. So this is actually Drumulator. Ah. Could be that, couldn't it? There we go. I think that, that might have saved the day. So let's put a bit of reverb on that. Um, okay. Okay, let's just listen to the pattern. Doesn't sound like it, does it? I wonder if there's a way we can uh, tune that up at all. Don't know how much kind of editing uh, possibilities there are here. But hey, let's just put that in for the moment and let's pretend it is the right one. Let's put that in. Okay. Okay, so um, it's I'm pretty happy with this so far. It's good. Um, there's obviously more details to come to be put in. I think what I'm going to do is jump to the uh, trumpet and choir section because <sighs> that's going to be interesting, isn't it? Um, so let's just have a listen to what the music is underneath that section. <laughs> So we've got the verse, drums, and there is obviously a little bit of variation. Uh, oh, actually. Sometimes you're better off. Oh no, what happened to the to the uh, the bass that I put in? Surely that's not got rid of, is it? Um, Okay, it's fine. I can put it back in. I, I think I remember it now. How did I lose that? Oh no. Play it in now. Here we go. Don't speak too soon.
weird's gone on there, hasn't it? Um, I wonder what happened there. So. I think I might have just kind of copied over those strings by mistake. So let's just drag them down here for the moment. Sometimes you're better off dead. Western town, a dead end world. The east. Western. Sometimes you're better off dead. There's a gun in your hand that's pointing at your head. You think you're mad. Maybe I didn't even. Maybe I didn't even record in those those uh, strings. I mean that bass line. How did I miss that? Sometimes you're better off dead. There's a gun in your hand. Sometimes you're better off dead. There's a gun in your hand that's pointing at your head. You Let's put it in then. Sometimes you're better off dead. There's a gun in your hand that's pointing at your head. You think you're mad. Sometimes. Sometimes. I'm either going mad or. Sometimes you're better off dead. There's a gun in your hand that's pointing at your head. You think you're mad. Too unstable. Kicking in chairs and knocking down tables in a restaurant. In a way. Sometimes you're better off dead. There's a gun in your hand that's pointing at your head. You think you're mad, too unstable. Kicking in chairs and knocking down tables in a restaurant in a West End. Sometimes you're better off dead. There's a gun in your hand that's pointing at your head. You think you're mad, too unstable. Kicking in chairs and knocking down tables in a restaurant in a West End town. Call the police. There's a madman around, running down underground to a dive bar in a West End town. Okay, so I'm gonna play it in. Here we go. Uh, let's take out the original. Um, okay, so let's uh, now go back to what we were going to do, which was put in the trumpet um, and let's drag over that there. <laughs> That's really funny. The, the a cappella track has picked up that as it should do. Okay, so let's uh, now, in fact, I should do a little bit of housekeeping here. Let's call that cowbell. Uh, let's call this bass. Let's call this strings. And let's call this drums. There we go. And we're going to call this one choir. So let's dive into uh, the emulator again. I know. I mean, I, I'm just saying, it's museums. It's it's uh, it's amazing how how great it sounds. Uh, it really does. Um, okay, so let's try quiet. Try choir. idea which one it is it sounds male to me not female um, interesting definitely male why doesn't why is there no male
voice effects. No, it's not going to be that, is it? Boom. Quack, quack. <laughs> um. What's what's a close? Okay, well, in the absence of a male choir with this, which is a real shame, I'm going to use the female choir. Which I think can do. It, it can do the job. Let's just play it over the top. So I might have to do this in sections as well. Uh, how long is this? Ooh dear, that's quite that's quite a lot, isn't it? Let's get rid of this. Maybe I can just learn it. Let's bring up the keyboards. Love that vocal there as well. Um, okay, so that's doable. Uh, just out of interest, you know what? I'm going to see if I have actually got the Archeria. I just don't think I've got it. No. It must be the new version. That's a shame, isn't it? Oh well, never mind. Let's go for what we've got. Work with what we've got. Here we go. Just even out that MIDI uh, with uh, Velocity MIDI plugin. Put a bit more reverb on, that will mask it a little bit. <laughs> I think rather than actually accurately recording in the uh, trumpet, I'm going to just find a trumpet sound <laughs> and just try playing a little bit over the top because um, I don't want to uh, spend too long doing this. Um, so let's just I've got the choir in anyway, so that's good. Even if it is a female choir rather than a male choir. Um, cool. So let's give us give us a trumpet. Looks like I'm going to have to upgrade my Archeria selection. Uh, I know this is uh, this is this is a bit of a long one. Oh, brilliant! Um, yeah, and I've got the week off this week from work. Um, I'm on leave, so uh, I'm definitely going to try to do some during the week if I can. Um, I'll do some of like my tracks. Uh, because I'm trying to finish off my album at the moment and uh, I 
want to share some stuff with you. Um, right, so um, here we go. So what have we got? Winds and brass. We've got English horn. There we go, trumpet. Doesn't sound as good as the original track. Okay. This is the kind of thing where you actually need to need to turn quantize off. I should have turned quantize off anyway from the start. Um, but come on, let's. I'm just going to record in the first bit. Here we go. Sounds great, but um, uh, it's not for it's not for the stream. Um, but hey, you know that's that's not too bad. Uh, <laughs> yes, pubs open tomorrow. Um, okay, cool. Well, look, there's there's. I think uh, it's time to wrap things up. Um, it's been immensely fun and I'm just so happy that everyone's been contributing. Um, thank you for the insight, Musines. That's just amazing. Uh, it really is. Um, let's just have a quick play from the start. I didn't get the uh, ambience, did I? Let's go again, because I need to do that, put that. I need to do that, don't I? Okay, let's do it from the start. So here we go. Here is uh, West End Girls.
There we go. Um, I didn't put in the uh, the congas as well. That's a major part of it. Um, but look, thank you so much. Uh, I really, really appreciate everyone's uh, input on this. And um, yes, I will hopefully see you during the week. So yeah, thanks a lot, everyone. Take it easy. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And I will uh, see you very, very soon. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye.